Greetings, everybody. Welcome to a special edition of Inside Curling, where we bring you up to date on what's going on with the games in Beijing. This is called Daily Draw, presented by CoolBet for Friday, February 4th. CoolBet is pr a proud sponsor of curling and, frankly, all things ice-related. The logo is a polar bear. After all, if you love sports, make sure you join the thousands of people already enjoying life inside the Cool Bet community. Kevin, uh, before we get started, we're going to get uh, right to this about the wrap uh, from what happened the day before in curling and what's coming up. Give us an idea, Kevin, of what your actual hours are in your in your time, <laughs> because you're, it's uh, Beijing is a 15-hour time zone change from where I am, uh, 14 for Warren, and it's... I guess it's an 18-hour time zone, something like that for you. So what, yeah, what are your hours going to be each day, Kevin? You're a little mixed up, Jim. But... Yeah, you're, yeah, 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 you're a little off on the, on the calculations, but, but that's okay. Yeah, we are a 13-hour time change from Eastern Seaboard here. Um, so it's, it's, on you, it's kind of unusual, but the, uh, I start work. I get to, uh, get to the studio around 5.30 in the afternoon, 5 o'clock in the afternoon, depending on the time, and we call the 8 o'clock to 10 o'clock Eastern draw and then okay and then uh usually have a post post-production meeting then we do the one till three a.m draw myself and uh and jason knapp that's that's usually mm -hmm. our two draws i usually get back to the hotel around four or four thirty in the morning sometimes though we have a couple of times we have to do the seven a.m to nine a.m draw after that and that's uh so then you wouldn't get back to the hotel till 10 30 11 um, and then quick nap and get ready to get back to the studio for 5 p.m. <laughs> so the 1 a.m. to 3, and then you might have the 7. Do you, do you stay up? Or can no, you, well, you, you, well, yeah, well, yeah, you're at the studio. The you're actually at the NBC. Yeah, there's no time to come back. So it's a, it's a grueling oh, oh, schedule, oh. but it's, it's the Olympics. It's the way it's supposed to be when, you, when uh, either you're playing in it or if you're commentating it. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a tough uh, schedule, but it's fun. It's so much fun. High octane. Uh, the studio is yeah. full of people. There's just tons of people around. The activity at 3 in the morning is insane. So you don't really realize it's middle of the night because it's busy. It's not, you, you kind of picture the middle of the night being sort of quiet. Well, that's not the case. That's when the nighttime in Beijing is during the day. That's when it's quiet. So it's kind of right. reverse normal. I almost fell asleep, Kevin. I was getting exhausted just listening to the hours that you're keeping. <laughs> man, oh, man. Uh, okay, let's get right to it. Uh, today was the second day of action uh, for the mixed doubles at the games. Uh, Kevin, uh, you're going to bring us up to date on what's going on there, and then we're going to talk about how you guys did with your predictions. <laughs> I'm impressed with me. Okay. <laughs> well, you're pretty sure. Go ahead, you. Kev. Draw. Okay. You're talking about draw, uh, I guess it was draw five and six? Yeah, draw five is an important one. Uh, there's three sheets going on draw five. On sheet Bravo is Sweden and Australia, and pretty predictably, um, Sweden sort of owned that game for most of it with steals in both four and five. I, I actually covered on sheet Charlie, on sheet C, Canada, Switzerland, and that was an interesting game. Canada got three in the first end, but I'll tell you what, Switzerland, this is, a, this is amazing at the Olympic level, the Switzerland team missed every single shot in the first end. They missed five in a row. I don't know the last time I would have saw that. And Canada stole mm -hmm. three. And things really didn't change after that. Um, Team Switzerland, you know, they're, they're, they were looked at as being a medal hope um, before this event started. But just, they don't seem um, like they're getting along very well right now, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, Jenny Perret and, and Martin Reels. Very strange. I really thought they'd... Uh, They'd have a chance at the podium, but if they don't, they've just really don't, they've got to get their stride going. They're just not playing very well. And the other game, Italy. Italy is uh, playing unbelievable, playing Norway. And uh, I did pick them in that game, but uh, Italy got a three first end, but then gave up a five, a five in the second end, and got two back. So the score after three ends was five, five. They forced Norway in the fourth to one. Then got a deuce, stole a deuce, took over the game again, won 11 8. It's, it's wild how many points Italy is scoring. So it's absolutely fantastic. And I'm real happy for them. And it's just a, a bit of a, a shock of the Olympics so far, playing so well. Um, let's go over to 
Sheet A on draw six, and that's uh, the Czechs playing Italy. And it was funny. I was, I was calling the uh, U.S.-Sweden game, and I, I can't really see updates uh, when you're in studio, but you can see the score updates. And just a few minutes in the broadcast, I look over, Italy gets four. <laughs> Here we go again. There's their scoring in, in bucketfuls. And then they steal another one and uh, go on to attend to two uh, trouncing of, uh, of the Czech Republic. Unbelievable. Canada, China, uh, same thing. You know, I think uh, John Morris and, and, and Rachel, well, John's curling really, really well. Uh, Rachel's really uh, stepped up her game. And now, after the first uh, draw, I believe she shot 55%. Second game, 85%. And, uh, and just keeps moving up the board, playing fantastic. China got one in the first, two for Canada, a steal of two. Took a 4-1 lead and never looked back. Great Britain, Australia. Great Britain, they're, they're stumbling a little bit. They're, they're getting some wins, but uh, against Australia, they were up 6-1 to one on Australia. Gave up a three, gave up a steal of two, and all of a sudden, tie game, got a deuce, <laughs> and gave a deuce and ended up winning in an extra end, but... But they're making things tough on themselves. So it's interesting with that team. Um, they are winning, but uh, it's not easy. <laughs> That's one thing for mm-hmm. certain. And then we called the Swedish-U.S. Uh, game. I actually picked Sweden uh, in this one. Extra end game. Terrific game. And uh, it, it came down to the eighth end. Actually, in the eighth end, Elmida Devel actually had an in-turn tap. She could see about... oh. Half the road, well, a little more than half. Let's say three quarters of a stone. Had to hit about a half and put it through the hole. Ends up hitting a little bit thin, knocking out another one of her counters. Only got two to tie. And then U.S. went on to win, which is a huge win for uh, Chris Plies and Vicky Persinger. They lose that one. I th- you know, U.S. is in big trouble. But now seeing in two and two and have already played quite a few of the really tough teams or supposed tough teams, the field's really tough here anyways. But uh, they put themselves in pretty good shape after draw six, Jimmy. Yeah, way to go, Kev. Um, what, one of the one of the bets that you can make on Cool Bet is the, what they call the over under. So they give you the total amount of uh, points that's going to be scored, and it's generally twelve point five, twelve and a half. Is they, they make it a half, so there's no ties. So you're going to pick whether the total score be over twelve and a half or under. That's the bet. Uh, Kevin, seven out of the eight games. We're over 12 and a half. In fact, the one that wasn't was still 12. Uh, is that what you predict through the whole Olympics, Kev, that the scoring is going to be absolutely massive in this deal? Well, it's not usually. <laughs> I guess right. that's the point of it, isn't it? Right now, because of whatever, be it, uh, there's lots of movement in the ice, and maybe because of that, um, it's a little bit tricky, too, along the edge of the four-foot line. I mentioned, I mentioned that yesterday. Um, that's where you see most of the misses are sort of around that edge of four. And that's where uh, Almeida De- Devel had that shot to win against the U.S., but it just stayed straight. And that's been happening along that edge of the four-foot line. So pay attention to that when you're watching games. That's late in the game. That's where the rocks are kind of staying straight. And I think that's one of the reasons for the high scores is that it's a little bit tough around that edge of four-foot area. And that's where a lot of times the big shots in the game are, have to be made. The hack waders to rocks that are near the button. You take about the edge of four, throw the rock, and you're not sure as a curler. Is it going to curl? Is it going to stay straight? What's going to happen? And those are where you get the misses, mm-hmm. and that's where you get the big ends. And that seems to be what's happening. One thing about it, Jimmy, if you're talking about Italy, they're scoring in threes and fours with the hammer all the time. <laughs> you might want to think about over with those guys. Right, right, right. Okay, I'm going to do it again. <laughs> The, the, the teams, Kevin, that missed every shot, missed all five shots uh, in one of your wrap-ups Switzerland, here. You is, that cause Switzerland. Of, is that because of ice conditions? No, that was, no. Uh, no. It, it, it was, was amazing. Just bad. <laughs> it was amazing. Jenny Prey, her first one was, was almost through the back rings. Martin Rios was heavy three in a row. And, and, then, and then Jenny was heavy again, a little bit, and ticked off, and uh, that was it. A big steal, a three to start. It was amazing. I just, you know, it was fascinating. Because you get a practice before the game starts. Like, you should have a pretty good idea of the speed and the curl before the puck drops, if you will. But it didn't work that way. Uh, very good, Kevin. Uh, well done for guys had no sleep. Um, Warren, you've been looking at some stats uh, from yesterday. Uh, bring us up to speed there. What stands out for you? 
Yeah, stats tell you some interesting things. In this mixed doubles game, it's kind of different as far as you see often it's one player shooting really well, another one not quite so much. Uh, but let's take a look at what's been going on. Uh, let me start with Canada in draw number five in their game against Switzerland. John Morris was a high man on the ice. He shot 89%. Rachel Holman, very respectable, 78%. But if you were watching that game, you'd think that uh, it would probably be the other way around because Rachel Holman uh, played fantastic. She made some great shots, crutch, crutch shots, clutch shots. But that's the percentages. Looking over on the game next to them, Italy-Norway, and, of course, we talked about Kevin said that they got five in the second end. It was kind of a lopsided game to some degree, but no one played well in that game. Uh, Italy was the one runaway winner, but they were only shooting in the 70s, and Norway was uh, way down the list into the 60s. In the Swedish-Australian game in uh, draw number five, again, uh, Sweden in that draw did very well. Oscar Erickson, Erickson shot 84%, and uh, Almeida Delvel was 75 so... They did well as, as, as well in that, in that uh, particular draw. We look at draw six. The Canadians start to, to show their power as to where they need to be, and, and they're getting there. John Moore shot 88% in that draw, and Rachel Holman was 80. And again, Rachel Holman, I thought, made some, uh, some outstanding shots in that game. Uh, Kevin mentioned Vicki Persinger in the U.S. game, and yes, uh, she shot 81%. Chris Ply is a little behind her at 71 but if we look at the Swedes, they really struggled in that game. The percentages show it. Deval was only 51%, and uh, she missed some key shots, and Ericsson was only at 70. So that kind of tells the story as to how it was very close in the end, but percentage-wise, uh, particularly Vicky Persinger, was quite a ways ahead. And despite the ups and downs that uh, the, British, the Great Britain team had, Bruce Mowat and Jennifer Dodds, in their game against Australia... They shot very well. Mowat was 89%. Dodds a little bit back at 72, but a well-played game. You see where the Italians are coming from, however, as well, uh, in the fact that in that game that they ran away on the Czech Republic, Constantina Con Stephanie Constantina was at 91%, and Mosana was at 86 So they're shooting well as well as winning on the scoreboard. Very good. What's, what's, a, what's a low and high percentage, Kev? What do you, what do you need to do? Uh, when, when you hear Warren give us those stats. Yeah, I think, uh, what, you know, what do you, you see a few games where uh, players are in the high 80s. That's very unusual. That's a tremendous. Um, somewhere, if you're around 80 in mixed doubles, you're yep. playing very, very well. Because you got to remember, in mixed doubles, unlike four-person curling, you only got one sweeper. And a lot of times, it's the, it's the thrower that jumps up and sweeps. So by the time you release the rock at the hog line, jump up, catch up to the rock, because you got to actually mm -hmm. catch up to it, then get on it and start sweeping, you've used up quite a lot of the ice surface already. A lot of times on a takeout, the person won't even catch the rock for three-quarters of the way down. So, you know, mm -hmm. the precision of the throwing to the sweeping to the line calling is certainly not as high in the mixed doubles game versus the four-person game. So 80% is really good. And, and to your point, Warren, Elmita Devel, uh, uh, was that 13% actually uh, going into a third or fourth end against the U.S.? So at only at 13%. Yep. And yep. then came back and actually played pretty well in Thanks. the second half. But, but that, uh, that certainly led to the, to the loss for uh, Team Sweden. Yeah, she has uh, They're keeping with the COVID protocols, of course, for this to, to be able to pull it off. Uh, how much practice time, Kev, are they, are they, are they getting uh, you know, before each game? Is, is it normal or is it cut way back with each yeah. team because of... COVID. Yeah, no, there's been no, no change that way. Um, you get your, your a warn, seven or ten minutes? Ten, I think. Ten minutes. Yeah, ten minutes of practice and then a draw the button, uh, both in, yeah, I say an intern and out turn, but it's not always with the right mm -hmm. lander and a left hander. So clockwise and counterclockwise, uh, draw the button, total distance. Um, you start first practice at uh, 30 minutes before the game and uh, both teams get their practice and their draws to the button. Calculate it, and then somebody gets last rock, and away you go. Cool. I, I think back uh, to the percentages for a bit, which is, is a good point. In four-person curling, you're looking at people today shooting in the low 90s if they're playing well, which, of course, that's not the case in mixed doubles because it's a very different game and it's different types of shots, and as a result, the percentages are usually a little bit lower. So as Kevin mentions, in mixed doubles, if you're in the high 80s, you're playing really well. 
In 2018, Excellent. Jimmy, in 2018, uh, this is a good point, uh, John Morris had two games in the 90s. Those were the only two games in the 90s in 2018. Uh, and I, I forget, it wow. was against uh, the uh, athletes of Russia um, were one of the games, and I forget the other. Jonathan, do you remember? Mm-hmm. The problem is, you guys, <laughs> I, get, I get given, uh, like, stats and all these little fun things every day. The problem is I can't keep them organized. That's the difficulty yeah, yeah, with the whole yeah. thing. So uh, hang on here. Let's see if I can find it. I think you I have see my it. desk. So <laughs> Ke- Ke- Kelly Grake is our, uh, is our stats person. She's absolutely fantastic. She's been with us now uh, with Jason and myself for three Olympics. And, uh, but now you, can, now you can stand down. That was kind of funny, I thought. But um, <laughs> hang on. Hang on. I'm just going through my, uh, my tree. Wait, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. All right, I got it. It was against the U.S., 92%. Okay. So John Morris, John Morris had the two games that were over 90% in the 2018 Olympics, 92% against Team USA, and 90% against the Olympic athletes of Russia. And those were the only two games over 90. So to your point, Warren, if you can get anywhere close to 90, that's an amazing feat in mixed doubles. But anywhere from the high 70s to uh, low 80s is more normal. Yeah, and so Stefani Constantini last night in their game against the Czech Republic, she shot 91. So I think that may be the first score that's been in the 90s this week, I believe. So, Fantastic. Jim, to your point, to you, you asked about the ice surface. How's the ice? Yes. Well, last Olympics, there, were, there was only two times where a person got over 90%, both times John Morris. This time, we're mm-hmm. getting quite a few more over 90 at this Olympic Games. So, obviously, the ice is, is pretty good. Otherwise, you wouldn't see these numbers over 90. Right. It wouldn't be possible. So, that kind of answers that question. So, very good. Right on. Uh, thank you, Warren. Good, good one on the stats. Uh, for me... The number one stat that is the most important is who won. Okay, that's the big. Okay. You're a genius, who Jim. Won. You're a genius. Yeah, I'm, I'm very smart, Warren. Who won? Yeah, who lost? I know it's unbelievable. <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> Staggering the stuff I know. Uh, we made some predictions yesterday, Kevin. You you just gave us a wrap. Uh, I'll tell you what. You guys were both very very good. Um, I know what you are, so I've, I've kept track. I just want to make sure you're not trying to cheat here. <laughs> uh, Kev, do you, know, do you know how you did yesterday? If you don't, I do. Oh, sure oh, he does. <laughs> you know, it was so close, so close to being 100%. Yeah. Almeida Devel had that intern tap yeah. through the hole in the, la- in the eighth end, just stayed a little bit straight, ticked her own rock out, went an extra end and lost. But if Almeida would have made that intern tap, I would have got them all, but not quite. Yeah, you would have, yeah. You 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 got on my list the the way we broke down these games you you won the first six games and and then the the last one uh, was you guys picked uh, Sweden yeah uh, wrong it was pick a nail voice. biter it was a nail biter yeah c- come on Jim it was next or end really. yeah listen you guys okay <laughs> there's a break. Kev, there's no room for pictures on the scorecard okay it's just who won who lost okay we're not we're not going to do that Warren uh, you were just one behind Kevin uh, good going. We're, I, I'm impressed with how you, how you did, Warren. Well, thanks, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Warren, you were five and two. Kevin six and one. Uh, the only game, uh, Kevin, and Warren, you'd uh, picked Norway over Italy was your one loss, and uh, you guys both picked Sweden. And as I said at the top of the show, so you guys aren't perfect. I was allowed to pick one game. I picked the USA, the last game that they ended up winning. Very so nice. I'm the only guy with a perfect record, okay? So, so how much did you win in that one, Jim? Did you put 100 uh, on Yeah, it? I bought 50 grand. I bet 50,000 <laughs> on that team, yeah. So I got to call, call them and thank them. Uh, so there we go. Uh, so what are the standings here, Warren, after the first six draws? Uh, re- remembering that it's a 10-team t- round robin. Uh, a very simple playoff format. You, you've got one plays... Uh, four, two plays three. The losers go for the bronze and the winners go for the gold. Uh, so how we, how's everyone looking, Warren, in the standings? Yes, the playoff format, which is a discussion for another day, that uh, questioned the WCF about it, and they said it's the IOC that uh, sets that format. It's what they use in most Olympic sports. So I don't think it's a very fair one, but uh, it is what it is. So here's the standings. 
Surprisingly, again as it is, Italy remains on top with four wins and no losses. Then we got two behind that you'd expect to be at three and one, which is Canada and Great Britain. Sweden just on the tail of them at three and two. And then we have three nations at two and two. Two we maybe wouldn't have expected to be there. China, Czech Republic, and the United States, which with that great game last night are hanging into the mix. Wouldn't have expected Norway to be at one and three along with Switzerland. Neither one of those teams we probably thought would end up at, at that part of the draw at this stage. But they mm -hmm. are, and on the bottom at 0-5 is Australia. So I think it's still very much wide open. I still, really, there's still nine teams in this thing, and it's going to take a day or two before that shakes down. Yeah, especially with teams scoring three and four and, and five <laughs> in some ends. So uh, we're going to... Yeah, I mean, the five in mixed doubles, you think about it, there's only six this, that you can score maximum, and they scored right. five of them. So right. that's pretty outstanding. Uh, well... Uh, we'll have to get your predictions again, boys, uh, coming up. Okay, boys, always uh, when we talk about the Olympics, uh, the discussion's robust and lively about who's going to get picked to carry the flag. Yesterday, the U.S. Olympic Committee announced that John Schuster would do it for the U.S. Uh, Kristen Skaslin is going to do it for Norway, carry the flag. Eve Muirhead is going to carry the flag for Great Britain. And the other, another curler, Madeline DuPont, is going to carry it for Denmark. Pretty cool that there's four curlers who are going to be represented in the opening ceremonies carrying flags. But no Canada, Warren. Uh, isn't it time that maybe a Canadian uh, should, you know, be able to carry the flag? Curling's been around for 24 years. Uh, we've won, I think you sent me some stats here, Warren. We've won 11 medals in that time in the Olympics. Uh, first of all, has there ever been a Canadian curler, Warren, carry the flag? No, there hasn't, and interesting enough, uh, you'd wonder why that, that hasn't happened, considering the fact that curling's been around for 24 years, has been very successful, but I think amongst other things, Canada is the largest curling nation in the world, it's uh, very much our sport, and many people argue no hockey is, but I think both those sports can very much uh, trace their roots back to Canada. So you would have thought because of that alone that there would have been a consideration along there somewhere. But there hasn't. And interesting, I put a post up on our Facebook group last night and uh, kind of suggested that isn't this high time. And unfortunately, a number of people misinterpreted it as me being, being critical of the choices that were made for, for uh, flag bearers for the opening ceremonies. And, oh. <laughs> of course, that was not the case at all. The, the two athletes selected are extremely uh, well-decorated and very deserving of that honor. My point was to make that curling has never been in this position and possibly the Canadian Olympic Committee may want to consider how that happens going forward. Uh, I'm not totally sure how they select that person. Kevin maybe <coughs> does, having been in the midst of it. Uh, I know some countries uh, actually have a vote among, amongst the athletes, which, again, I'm not sure that's the best route to go either. I was thinking this morning, it, it again, it's like everything else. It starts to become, to some degree, political, and uh, maybe we've reached a point where it shouldn't be an athlete carrying the, the flag. It should maybe be a volunteer or maybe somebody from the host Olympic Committee because... Uh, you can't really satisfy everybody, and as a result, you're going to probably perturb some people. What do you think, Kevin? Mm -hmm. Well, there's one thing for sure. You definitely perturb, perturb some people on Facebook yesterday <laughs> by putting it up. Uh, Attaboy, oh, Warren. <laughs> well, I can do that anytime. <laughs> yeah, it there's doesn't take much, Kev. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of comments on there. Well, it couldn't be John. He's busy curling. It couldn't be this person. couldn't be that. That wasn't the point of the conversation. It's... Should no. a curler be doing it at some point? And, uh, and I think there's no question that we need to have a curler carry that flag. You know, the sooner the better. Um, curling, you know, the, the, we're uh, the decorations on the athletes are fantastic in curling. Um, but it won't happen this time, but hopefully it'll happen next time. One thing about it, Jimmy, uh, curling, though, around the world, uh, this has tied the record from 06, where uh, curling had four flag bearers. So... So it's really, really good, anyways, for our sport mm -hmm. worldwide yep. um, that there are four Excellent. flag bearers, same as in 2006, which is great. Right. You know, interesting, if you look at the U.S. and Great Britain, for example, uh, you know, and they said, we're going to pick a curler, uh, there's not much of a challenge there to pick John Schuster, for example, for the U.S., and Eve Muirhead is a household name, you know, from Great Britain. But if, you know, Canada's got to look at picking a curler, holy man, that would be a tough decision. <laughs> uh, you know, with w whether it's a Rachel Holman or, or uh, you know, a John Johnny Mo. Uh, my pick would be though Brad Brad Guju if they had to pick someone. What about you, Kevin? Well, 
There's two, curling, listen, being in the Olympics, there's two Olympians this Olympics that have two gold medals already. Yep. Caitlin Laws, uh, one from four-person curling and one from mixed doubles, and Johnny Moe. John Morris, of course, same thing. One from four-person curling and one from mixed doubles. So, um, it would, in my opinion, it would be a choice between those two. Yeah. And uh, but I'm not even sure between the two who you'd pick. Both are <laughs> worthy of it. And uh, but you know, like I say, it's uh, it's a matter of getting a curler in there sometime. It doesn't have to be this time. It doesn't have to be because mm-hmm. of this or that. It's a more of a general thought statement than. Uh, needs to be this time because somebody deserves it more than anybody else. That's not the case. No. And, right. I, and I think, again, it, uh, it needs to reflect upon the strength of curling in Canada and the role that Canada played in even getting sport of curling into the Olympics. And the mixed doubles is uh, also comes from Canada. So I think all those things need to be uh, considered when they're making this decision. Well, listen, if it is going to go away from a, a competitor, Warren, it, like, like you had mentioned about a volunteer or, or someone else who's done something, I might throw in Warren Hansen there, Kev, <laughs> for what he's done for curling. Huh? The sticks and oh, stones, the book, yep. what, everything that's going on in the Olympics. No, no one's going to hold a candle to you, Warren, about uh, what you've done. Uh, anyway, um, Have you thank read you very the book much, yet, boys. Jimmy? Have you read the book? Not yet. <laughs> No, not yet. No, I haven't. It's, it's yeah. like He's... 900 pages long or something, and there's not <laughs> enough pictures. I don't know if I'd ever get through yeah. it. I Listen, uh, you guys, I'm just trying to f- finish the book I have going now, but I've run out of crayons, okay, before I, Tom can, and Jerry. Before I can write. <laughs> you started okay. it when you were four. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Jim's waiting for the audio book version to come out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I can't. Uh, you know that long attention span I have. I could just chapter after after chapter, I could I could read. So okay, well there we go, boys. Uh, quit picking on me, okay, Kev. That's enough. Okay, I'm sensitive, you guys. I told you that. All right, I'll uh, I'll read your book, Warren. Okay, I uh, for sure. Good. Sticks and stones. Sticks I'm looking stones, for a review. Way. Okay. <laughs> uh, speaking of stats, all this stuff about ninety percent and eighty-eight percent and all that. I'll tell you what, uh, my average through high school was about thirty percent lower than any of those stats. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, let's take a break. When we come back, uh, you guys were rolling on your picks, and we're going to get your predictions for the next couple of draws. We'll be right back. Uh, okay, Kevin, welcome back, everybody. Uh, today, let's get started with your cool bet picks. I've uh, got a lot of games, Kevin, between these two draws. Let's start with you. Australia and Norway is the first one I have down here for draw seven. Yeah, it's really, this, this next three draws are really tough to pick. In, in this case, uh, you know, uh, Australia's been struggling, so I'll pick Norway. Uh, but the other mm-hmm. game is Switzerland and Sweden at that time, and that's really tough because you've got... I, I have to go with Sweden, but Switzerland could win that game qu- quite easily. Real even game. It should come down to the last rock, and we'll see who has it. But I'll, I'll go with Sweden on that one. Draw 8. There's only two games, by the way, on draw 7. Draw 8, mm-hmm. China-USA. I would. I think yesterday, if I would have bet that game, I would have picked China. But USA have started to get their stride going. Um, so I'm going to go. I'm going to go with the USA. But once again, that is a game that should come down to the last inch. It should be a really mm-hmm. tight battle. I'm going to call USA. Great Britain, Czech Republic. I'll go with Great Britain. They seem to just be sneaking through games. But you know, when you're when you get to something like an Olympic Games, you don't really want to win games just sneaking through. Because eventually mm-hmm. that, that tends to turn on you. But I'll go with Great Britain. Sweden, Canada. Canada is rolling. I'll take Canada. Australia, Italy. Uh, I'll just keep picking Italy, you guys. Okay. <laughs> they've, been, they've been doing wonderful. And uh, Great Britain, Italy. Wow. I cannot stop taking Italy. I will take Italy over Great Britain. Norway, China. That should be, if it's not an extra end, it'll be close to an extra end. Oh, I'm going to have to go with China on that one. Uh, I think they should be able to squeak it out. They they play really well early, it seems to me. So they may get a lead early and be able to hold mm-hmm. it. Czech Republic, Switzerland. I'll go with Switzerland on that one. And the USA, Canada. Oh, what a game that's going to be. That should be a wild one. Um, yeah, I'll stick with Johnny Moe and Rachel. But once again, that is a really, really good game. I'll tell you what. This is a this is a tough group of three draws. If anybody, there's there's ten games total. If you can manage to pick eight right, you have done a great job because they are such good battles. Yeah, for sure. 
Well, you guys did a great job at six and one yesterday and five and two. Uh, by the way, Kevin, you picked every team that's on the right side of my <laughs> no. little list. Did, you? did I? Yes, you did. Yes, you did. did. Yeah. You, know, we, you know, the matchups. Yeah. 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 So, Are so you it's going to be easy to check? I'm 100%. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm just I'm, Jim, I'm keeping track here. I don't trust I, you guys. I can't believe how observant you are. You are correct. I'm really clever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, Warren, uh, over to you. Your pick. Well, Australia, Norway is the first one. I probably won't differ a lot from Kevin, but I will to some degree. I, I think, yeah, there's no question Norway should defeat Australia. Um, they struggled a bit yesterday, but um, I think the, the ability is still there and it's going to shine. I think Switzerland, Sweden, uh, Oscar Eriksson, they had a bit of problem to vol, particularly in, in last night's game, but I think they will come back today, and I'll, I'm going to pick them to defeat Sweet, Switzerland. You're picking Sweden? Sorry? I'm picking Sweden, yes. Okay. Draw eight, China, USA. Vicky Persinger played really well in that game last night, made some phenomenal shots. I thought the Chinese team were, were a little not as sharp as they had been, so... I'm going to pick the USA. I think they're going to uh, pull that one out. All right. Uh, Czech Republic, Great Britain. I'll have to stick with uh, Great Britain on that one. Mullet's playing really well, and uh, I think he will continue to because of who he is. Sweden, Canada. Uh, again, I have to stick with Canada. Rachel Holman is the, the key to that team right now. She's making some great shots, and it's just getting better with time. Australia, Italy. I think little question that Italy will probably take that game. Although mm -hmm. Australia last night against Great Britain uh, really came up with some uh, some great shots towards the end, but I still think Italy will prevail. In draw number nine, Great Britain, Italy. That should be a really good game. And uh, I, again, I'll have to lean with the experience of of Moat and Dodds and thinking that they will take that game. Norway, China. Again, I think that Norway has stumbled a bit uh, in the last day, but they're still one of the best mixed doubles teams in the world. Uh, I think they will take that game over China. I think Czech Republic and Switzerland, Switzerland will be the ones to domineer that one. Mm -hmm. And I agree with Kevin, the U.S.-Canada game, if uh, Vicky Persinger in particular can play like she did in the latter part of the game last night, uh, I think that's going to be a phenomenal game. But I'm going to stick with uh, Johnny Moe and Rachel because I think as a team, they are probably right now playing the best of anybody. So I think they will prevail. So there's the way I see it. So, Jim, over to you. Uh, yeah, so you guys, um, Warren, you only picked two games different than, than Kevin did. Uh, you picked Great Britain when uh, Kevin picked Italy. You picked Norway when Kevin picked China. Uh, anyway, over to me to uh, extend my perfect record. Um, Which one game are you going to pick, Jimmy? I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> maybe, maybe you should pick two today. Okay. Uh, I am going to. I am going I'll to pick, you pick two. No, just two pick, games, Jimmy. You got to pick. Okay, two I'll pick games. two games. Yep. Okay, I'm going to play spoiler because I like to do this. Uh, Warren, I heard. I was listening to you in, in very attentively, uh, and I'm going to pick Australia in the in draw eight over Italy. I'm going against both of you guys. Well, and that'll it's, be. It's not impossible. Yep. Exactly. So that's that's my one pick, and uh, my other my other pick is going to be. Uh, Let's see. I'll pick. I'll pick uh, USA over Canada. Don't freak out, people. Okay. Don't freak <laughs> out. Okay. Don't 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 get mad at me. Get mad at Warren. Keep the string alive. Okay. <laughs> uh, there we go. Uh, there's a, there's a wrap on our our daily installment of what's going on in Beijing for the games. This is called Daily Draw. Cool bet is a. Uh, so there we go. There's a wrap on what's going on at the games over in Beijing. We do it each and every day during the whole Olympics. Uh, we, we come on. It's called Daily Draw and give you a wrap on what happened the day before and what's coming up. Daily Draw is brought to you by CoolBet. They are the proud sponsor of curling and, frankly, all things ice-related. Check out their logo. It's a polar bear. After all, if you love sports, make sure you join the thousands of people already enjoying life inside the CoolBet community. Uh, so thanks a lot, everybody. Uh, if you're so inclined and want to lay a bet, get over to uh, the Cool Bet website. Uh, you want to send us an email? Uh, or if you want to continue to get mad at Warren, okay, you can do it by inside curling at gmail.com and jump on the Facebook group. Uh, you've given me my daily reading, Kevin, when you made up uh, 
noted that <laughs> Warren, Warren got buried yesterday because everyone thought that he was talking down about who the flag bearers are. But, of course, he didn't mean that. So uh, there we go, folks. Uh, everybody enjoy the Olympics. Uh, we're just getting rolling here. So thanks, Kev. You, you get to sleep crazy hours that you're keeping. And uh, Warren, take it easy on everyone, okay? Okay, be a nice, Don't be the Grinch today, Warren. And, and okay, don't, be a nice single, guy. don't single Kevin out with the crazy hours. I'm getting up at 4 a.m. <laughs> as well, Jim. <laughs> you never go to bed, I've told everyone, okay? Yeah, you're like, you're like a bat, Warren, okay? You stay up all night and, and go to sleep during the day. Take it easy, everybody, and thanks for joining us on the Daily Draw, brought to you by CoolBet.